My name is Madison Rohr, and I'm here at the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art in Kansas City, Missouri. The painting next to me is called The Triumph of Bacchus by Nicholas Poussin. Nicholas Poussin was a French artist who was born in Normandy, France in 1594. The original or alternative name for this painting in his native language of French is Le Triomphe de Bacchus. The specific painting that Poussin created is oil on canvas and was made during the years 1635 to 1636. Nicholas was a part of the Baroque art movement and typically painted figures, landscapes, and different kinds of scenery. Much of his artwork has the energy and dynamism of the Baroque movement and emphasizes lines and contours. Originally, Poussin created this work of art when he received a fairly hefty commission from France when a man named Cardinal Richelieu ordered for a set of four bacchanals to be made, each recognizing one antique god. Three of these paintings, including Le Triomphe de Bacchus, were meant to hang in Richelieu's castle in Poitou. During his years of painting, which were most of his life, he also created many other works of art, some of which include A Dance to the Music of Time, The Funeral of Phocyon, The Crossing of the Red Sea, and Landscape with Polyphemus, just to name a few. It could be hard to put this piece of artwork into one specific illusion, simply because it represents different ones. The actual landscape of the, of the picture is very naturalistic and appears true to life, but some of the figures, like the centaurs, are representational or figurative because they are created or made up objects. Overall, the composition of this piece involves a relatively balanced appearance, because though it might seem a bit cluttered, each side of the picture has the same amount of subject matter placed there to create a harmonious balance, even though when divided down the middle, it is not exactly the same on each side. Examples will be how the tree on the left side offsets the smoke on the other side, or how the small child in the bottom left corner balances out the man draped in the blanket on the bottom right corner. A majority of the lines in this picture are thin and delicate, as the colors are very vibrant or very dark, mainly use of cooler colors, and most of the lines used appear to be wavy or curved. Shading with the lines is also used to make some of the objects look three-dimensional. There is an illusion of depth used also, as the people are on the foreground of the painting and the mountain seems to be further away in the background. He liked to group his figures in the foregrounds of paintings because it carefully derived the space of the painting. Originally, when Poussin was influenced by the Venetian Renaissance, he used warm sensual colors which is continued in this painting during the time he became obsessed with classicizing the art of Raphael in antique art. He believed in using color as an essential for setting the mood in this painting and liked to relate colors with their relationship to light. Brown and tan were common hues depicted in the Triumph of Bacchus, as well as red and a deeper blue. Many of the figures in this artwork also appear idolized and are shown according to an accepted standard of beauty. The texture of this work looks smooth as it was painted with oil on canvas. The Triumph of Bacchus fits the most prominently under the semiotic methodology. This method emphasizes different types of signs and has to do with formalism. Structuralism falls under semiology and diverges from artists with gods and viewing art as mimesis, which is making exact copies of something from nature. It can also be when the meaning of a piece of work is conveyed exclusively by its author or artist. In this painting, there are several things that represent an alternative meaning. The triumph of Bacchus is known as the god of wine, depicted on his chariot on the left, which is being driven by Cupid and attended by many centaurs, nymphs, pudi, and satyrs. Among all of these things, you will find the pan with his pipes, Hercules holding a tripod that he stole from Apollo, and among the clouds, Apollo is leading the chariot of the sun. Nicholas Poussin was symbolizing Bacchus as the higher power and the mythical tree creatures serving him. The figures in the foreground and river on the bottom right celebrate triumph and victory as they return from India. The man half-clothed on the bottom right is a river god, and symbolizes the Indus River and Indian subcontinent. Though many might consider Poussin's work neoclassical, that was before his time and he can actually be identified under the Classicism movement as the leading painter of the classical French Baroque style. The Baroque is usually thought to use a lot of exaggerated motions or movements and easily interpreted details that produce drama, exuberance, or tension in a variety of art forms, but specifically painting this time. Along with being classified as a Baroque artist, Poussin did incorporate classical aspects in his artwork by using a lot of gestures, designs, and various colors. Overall, I really love looking at this painting. After doing all my research, it still intrigues me why a lot of the figures depicted on the foreground are only half-clothed and why there is a woman who is a centaur, as they are usually men. The psychological value of this painting might depend on the person viewing it, but it seems to be a rather chaotic scene that would make someone feel stressed out. One might also notice all the beautifully detailed people and gods in the painting and contemplate the natural beauty of some of these mystical creatures. His piece really makes you think, and I think that is the overall goal art should achieve.